What is up guys and welcome back to Koi's Corner. Now if you're like me, most of us kind of grew up following a certain religious or philosophical guideline in our youth. And these are all belief systems that have been taught to us by generations above us and handed down for hundreds and thousands of years. Different teachings, different ways of life, different rules, and different ideas of the nature of existence. And yes, there are hundreds of them, but thanks to your guys' feedback on Twitter, we're going to be starting a mini-series on one of my favorite topics when it comes to philosophical notions and ways of living your life, which is Buddhism itself. As you can see, I am a fan of it. In a 30-second understanding, Buddhism is a method of teaching that guides you away from the wanting and the suffering and the needing in your life. We all need things, want things, and suffer because of things. We fear things such as death, sickness, poverty, and it messes with our mind to a very heavy extent. And what Buddhism basically is, is a philosophical guideline, a system of rules you can follow and paths you can take to release yourself from the suffering, from the stress for all time and become awakened, to become enlightened, to reach a state of nirvana. It is a great way to mold your mind and to strengthen yourself in your life and a great philosophical guideline to live by in my opinion. So with that being said, let's get into the first segment on Buddhism for Beginners which is the Buddha and the Three Jewels. Now like any philosophical or religious guidelines that we may follow in our life, there are deviations and variations of such topics all around the world because as time goes by things change and our ideas and concepts and things we might want to fix and these philosophical and religious notions change as well. So what do Buddhists believe? If we're going to start anywhere we need to know this I think what exactly Buddhists do believe and what exactly Buddhists do think but it's different than any other religion in a sense and which is why it's mainly classified as a philosophical guideline because Buddhists don't believe per se in the average and common way that we think of the word belief. Most of these ways of life that arise out of religion rely on a belief system as their basis, as their underlying foundation for what they will talk about. But Buddhism's different. Buddhism doesn't have that. Instead, in a sense, Buddhism uses multiple sets of philosophical guidelines to help guide the user, the person, the self into an understanding of universal truths and awareness. And when you understand these truths and follow these philosophical guidelines, you are led down a path to something called enlightenment or nirvana in a sense. This is liberation from all forms of suffering in the world, from all forms of suffering within the self, within the me, the I, as you may view it. And when you release this, you enter this state of nirvana, enlightenment, bliss, release from suffering and that is the main goal of Buddhism if not the only major goal of Buddhism is to release yourself from this cycle of suffering. It's very clear that we all suffer. Suffering is part of life. We grow, we get hurt, we get sick, we age, we die and this is essential to be understood if you're looking into Buddhism itself. But don't let that scare you because the beautiful part is we do have the ability and the capacity to end this suffering, to release ourselves from it and through these teachings through these guidelines, in a sense, you can release yourself from this suffering. So let's start with one of the main pillars, if not the main pillar in Buddhism itself, which is the Three Jewels. And these three pillars go by the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Words you may not know, words you may have never even heard before, but they are very simple to understand if you pay attention to them. In the words of Chris Walter, think of something like suffering as a disease. Buddha would be the healer, Dharma would be the medicine of that healer itself, and the Sangha would essentially be the people around you and the nurses around you kind of helping you get through that healing process after already going through the doctor and the medicine. This is about as basic as it can get, so you have to kind of view the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha as the healer, the medicine, and the surrounding company that help you heal as well. So this first jewel is in fact taking refuge in the Buddha himself, who is the teacher, the guide, the knowing one, and most of all, a human. He is not a god. He is not a demigod or an idolized figure in true Buddhist fashion. He is just a human like me or you. He is an awakened one. And all it really means is focusing your right intent and right effort on the Buddha himself. And we follow these examples and teachings of the Buddha in order to achieve Nirvana. There is no outside stipulation as to why you would follow them. Any self-benefit for egotistical reasons or to help others around you is not true essence of Nirvana. It is released from all this. You are not trying to achieve something to be better than anyone else or better than a past self. It is just to release yourself from this stress, from this eternal suffering, and that is the only core process to it. And they enunciate on this in Buddhist philosophies by saying that you are not trying to achieve enlightenment just for yourself. It is for all beings on the planet, all sentient things in existence. That is why you are trying to achieve nirvana, eternal enlightenment in a sense, because you are doing it for all things, not just for selfish purposes. Now the second jewel is taking refuge in the Dharma. 
which is in a rough English translation, the truth of the enlightened mind or the right way, the right path in an essence. It is the daily transformation that you are using as a process to reach this state of enlightenment, to reach this blissful nirvana, to free yourself of suffering. It's molding one's self in, in essence and viewing these teachings as the best way to do so, to understand the true reality of nature. And these things through time help us become more kind, more patient, more understanding, more caring about all things. It works around all ways of life and these teachings include things like the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, which are things we will get to in the future, but are also very understandable things if you take the time to learn about them. And through this Dharma, through this constant teaching, through this second jewel, you can use it as a second pillar of understanding Buddhism and what it is, and by following these methods, head towards this state that you've heard so much about. And the third and final jewel is taking refuge in the Sangha, in the spiritual community, in a sense, that surrounds you during this process, during this learning period of your life. It's beautiful to me because these words aren't English and they are, must be translated, and Sangha translates roughly to a community of like-minded spiritual individuals. And from the chapter in Buddhism, they agree that human interaction is necessary for personal growth, for growth throughout your life. We are interactive beings, we are social creatures, and we must utilize that to our advantage if possible. And because of the social status and the invention of things like language itself and communication, we have the ability to translate our thoughts and teachings from one another to others and help them understand things that we may understand better. The same way I'm making this video for you guys to help you understand the core concepts of Buddhism and its philosophical systems. This is all at its core philosophy. You must remember that this is not a religious based text. It is a philosophical based notion and is barely even classified as religion itself because it is so based in philosophies. So as the third jewel of the Sangha, it is telling you to be wise and use spiritual teachings of other awakened ones such as Bodhisattva and not just only the Buddha himself but others who understand the way and the path and the light and the knowledge that comes from awakening or becoming enlightened. So when we view the points from only one human, it might be a little more difficult than if we had three or four or 10 or 20 different learning ways and understandings and explanations of the path we can take to reach this state. So always keep an open mind with that. And this is what the Sangha talks about as the third jewel of Buddhism. That is a core concept that all Buddhists kind of must understand and need to follow as their path progresses and as they go along this way and this understanding. Another thing to notice is that Buddhism thrives off knowledge and understanding. It is not about accepting knowledge like other religions do and asking no questions about just following the rules. Buddhism is all about questioning your place in the universe, your existence, and expanding your mind as much as possible to take in this knowledge and to learn more and more and more as much as you can throughout your existence, throughout your lifetime. There is no past or present in true Buddhist fashion. There is only the now, the eternal now, this moment. And this moment is forever fleeting. It is never one specific moment. It is always gone or happening. It is not somewhere you can sit and say, this is the moment. And it is also different at a very core level because they don't believe in a god. There is no god in Buddhism, only a Buddha himself, a human being who in this fashion created his own teachings to give to the other people to follow to reach the state that he has reached, the awakened state. So with all this emphasis on one of the men who created arguably the most effective life guide so far that we've seen, who was Siddhartha Gautama? Well, Siddhartha Gautama was an Indian man born into a rich and luxurious life in India in about 566 BC, given the rough estimates we have now, in a place called Lumbini, Nepal, which is in northern India near the Himalayan mountains. In his family, he was the son of a king. He had wealth, power, all the possible potentials that anybody may want today in this materialistic lifestyle. And because of this, he was sheltered from the world. His parents did not want him to see the suffering, the death, the stress going on outside the palace walls, so they hid it all from him as best they could. But as he traveled outside more often, he saw these things. He saw the death, the starvation, the hunger, the suffering, and he realized that he needed to understand it more. So at 29, he left his palace. He left his place as the prince, as the son of a king. He did this because he came to a realization that all this money, this wealth, these material objects that we so covet, even today, thousands of years later, do not matter at heart, at the true essence of what we do in our daily life. These material possessions do not guarantee happiness. They do not guarantee a life free of stress and suffering. He knew he had to find the true essence of happiness and understanding in the world to free himself from the suffering. So after leaving the palace walls six years earlier, after renouncing everything and becoming a fully aesthetic monk, after finding a balance in all of this, he decided that he had to find an understanding and a knowledge of the true nature of reality itself. He needed to end suffering and discover how to end suffering. And so because of this, 
he sat down under what is known as the Bodhi tree and decided that he would not move from that spot until he discovered the true nature of suffering and how to fix it or die trying. And meditating under this tree after pushing away all temptations that came to his mind overnight, he had an enlightened moment, a sense of understanding, an awakening as they call it. He became what is known as the awakened one. He realized this nature of suffering. So that is Siddhartha Gautama. That is a very simplified definition of what he is. He is just the man in a sense, the Buddha, the original awakened one that discovered these universal truths that brought us the understanding of enlightenment itself and how we could attain this and how we could release ourselves from all the suffering in the world. That is the three jewels of Buddhism. That is the pillars to all Buddhist views, which we'll be going over next week and in the next couple of weeks as this Buddhism for Beginners segment spreads out. I might have about four or five episodes. I'm not exactly sure yet, but thank you guys for viewing this one and let me know on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat. My handle is Koi Fresco on all of these. Let me know what parts of Buddhism you want to learn about. If you go and Google stuff about this, I already know what I have for the next video, but there's always more I can add into it. Again, I will see you next week. Much love and peace. Have a good day. Fix and these philosophical and religious notions change as well. So what do Buddhists believe? If we're going to start anywhere, we need to know this, I think, what exactly Buddhists do believe and what exactly Buddhists do think. But it's different than any other religion in a sense, and which is why it's mainly classified as a philosophical guideline because Buddhists don't believe per se in the average and common way that we think of the word belief. Most what is up guys and welcome back to Koi's Corner. Now, if you're like me, most of us kind of grew up following a certain religious or philosophical guideline in our youth. And these are all belief systems that have been taught to us by generations above us and handed down for hundreds and thousands of years. Different teachings, different ways of life, different rules, and different ideas of the nature of existence. And yes, there are hundreds of them, but thanks to your guys' feedback on Twitter, we're going to be starting a mini-series on one of my favorite topics when it comes to philosophical notions and ways of living your life, which is Buddhism itself. As you can see, I am a fan of it. In a 30-second understanding, Buddhism is a method of teaching that guides you away from the wanting and the suffering and the needing in your life. We all need things, want things, and suffer because of things. We fear things. It's a philosophical guideline to live by, in my opinion. So with that being said, let's get into the first segment on Buddhism for Beginners, which is the Buddha and the Three Jewels. Now, like any philosophical or religious guidelines that we may follow in our life, there are deviations and variations of such topics all around the world because as time goes by, things change in our ideas and concepts and things we might want, such as death, sickness, poverty, and it messes with our minds to a very heavy extent. And what Buddhism basically is, is a philosophical guideline, a system of rules you can follow and paths you can take to release yourself from the suffering, from this stress for all time and become awakened, to become enlightened, to reach a state of nirvana. It is a great way to mold your mind and to strengthen yourself in your life in a great